Good evening to everybody. We're in our last class before Pesach. We're going to do some Pesach songs, and we want to connect it with cleaning. We want to connect it with cleaning and scrubbing and uh, purifying and getting things unclogged. How can we do it with Nigun? Let's start with, uh, let's start with something else, not what we just did before. Let's start with uh, Alachat. Chabad melody, uh, but you probably don't know there's also a Karliner melody. I want to play to you the way it is in Karlin. We're going to have fun today comparing some Nigunim. Uh, uh, one of the Karliners told me that he knows at least 200 Nigunim that are common. You know, we sing, we sing them both in, in uh, Karlin and in Chabad. Uh, there's a few reasons. First of all, they come from the same area, both from Russia. And uh, the Russian Nigunim are, uh, are you know, in the same area. So it would go from one to the other. There were some people that wrote Nigunim for Chabad and Kalin. There was Yaakov Talechaner and Yankele Talechaner and Yosel Tolner. There were a few, a few composers from those, those times that uh, wrote Nigunim for all kinds of hostages. And Nigunim in their nature, they passed from place to place. So, uh, but we don't know who it is from. We don't know if it was Chabad first that went to Karlin or Karlin first that went to Chabad. Sometimes uh, they, they bring up a, a Karlin and Nigun and says, but in Chabad they sing it much nicer. Sometimes in Karlin they sing it nicer. There's something about the, the fire in Karlin. But here's the way they sing this same Nigun in Karlin. about the ending. I have to check the way the Carliners sing it today. These are old notes. These notes that I have here are from a book by Yorachin Stochevsky, some Israeli musician that decided to collect. It became in fashion, 1920, 1930, 1940, to collect old uh, Hasidic Nigunim and write them down because that was a trend in all the world, like Bartok and Kodai. They used to go around all the, all the villages and, and collect old songs from the peasants and, and write them down and it was a fashion. So they did also for the, we have a Beregovsky collection, an Idelson collection, and uh, Stotevsky also wrote it down. And Geshuri, which was a, a religious Jew, he also went around and, and collected Nigunim. And um, so we have all kinds of notebooks. I have notebooks here. I'll, I'm going to do some from the, the Geshuri notebook soon. So uh, yeah, very interesting. Now, we want to clean up with Nigun. So first of all, I didn't mention in Hebrew, but there's a saying by Reb Nachman of Breslab that the Nigun is always pure. You can't contaminate a Nigun just like you can't uh, contaminate the Pintle Yid inside, you know, inside of us, the Pintle Yid, that whatever we do, it stays clean. 
that's why we started the morning with Modeani and, and uh, you know, that always stays with us. In the melody also, there's a pintalayid in the melody, that's the home. We always go back to the same home. Always, we feel at home, if it's major, it's minor. goes back to the home, we start from the home, not always, but usually we go back to the home and feel, ah, we're back home. So there's a saying that the nigun doesn't get contaminated, but it's not exactly true. Depends who, who sings it, who plays it. If the song was pure, if it wasn't written with, with bad intentions inside of it, like for, for something not, not clean, uh, not modest, or, or bad you know, uh, human inclinations, you know, very lowly, the nigun will be lowly, it won't help. It, it, it can't stay pure because it wasn't pure. But if, if it's a holy nigun, if it's a pure nigun, depends who's playing it. Because uh, you can take a nigun and kill it. <laughs> you, can, you can make such an arrangement that you can't hear the nigun anymore and it's like, you choke it. But, um, but if the musician is, is a good musician, he's, he's pure, the nigun stays pure. But the nigun can help us get pure. You know, we, we, we we can clean. The Alter Rebbe said that he can go into a yichasid and, and take out of him all the dirt. How? With a nigun. Or when the chassidim mm. complain that they don't understand the tanya, he says, well, you need a nigun. We'll talk about that more later, but let's do... melody, very clear, very obvious. Um, there's, a, there's more songs that I want to do with you that also are connected between Chabad and Karlin. One of the most famous ones that we sing in Chabad because the Rebbe taught us is actually a Karliner song. It was composed by Rabbi Aaron of Karlin himself and it goes like this. I'll start with the Karlin uh, version. Ah, you know what? <laughs> I did the same mistake in Hebrew also. There's a famous Karav Yom. No, the, uh, I'm talking about the Amda. There's a famous Vahisha Amda that everybody sings. <laughs> Let's do the original, probably the original, which is a Karlin song by Rabbi Aaron of Karlin himself. And you can hear that the... the, the the, the, how do you call it, the folk song that came out of this one. Listen to this.
famous version. So a Karlin song. But let's go to the other one that we sing in Chabad, and in Chabad it's obvious that it is from Karlin, because the Rebbe said so. The Rebbe said, I'm going to teach you something nice from Karlin. So I don't remember which sikh, which Jay Fabrengen, but at least once the Rebbe mentioned, here is a nice, you want to hear a nice nigud from Karlin, I'll teach you. And he taught it a little different. Let's do the original, then we'll go over to our version. to the more famous Chabad version, famous by us. That's 
up into the heat of the song. Or he, or the man over there. We're going to do another Kalin song soon. Uh, let's do some more other songs first. Uh, we did with Sran Galtano, right? Um, so the Alter Rebbe said he can clean a lead with, with, uh, with, uh, with gaining his insight and cleaning with a nigger. Uh, you can connect with a tzaddik through learning his Torah. You can connect through the stories. You can connect through the, the hanhagot, their, their uh, behavior, what they told us to do. But the main thing that how we can connect with tzaddikim is through nigun. And how we connect this with cleaning. So the, the, I think it was the Alter Rebbe that spoke about the process. I don't remember. One of the Rebbeim, more than one. That the process of koshering meat, when you kosher meat, there's three stages that you have to go through in order to kosher the meat. So the meat will be edible for a Jew. It has to be soaked for a long time. Then it has to be salted. And then, after being salted for a certain amount, you can't do more, that, that's relatively short, and then you have to rinse it. And uh, when the Rebbeim spoke, you know, they, they koshering the meat, that means our flesh, have to make our flesh become holy. How do we do that? You know, there's a spiritual way of koshering ourselves. So how, how, what's the spiritual process of koshering ourselves? So you have to soak in the Rebbe's teaching, what the Rebbe taught. You know, you have to learn, you have to learn chasidut. You soak in chasidut, so you, you absorb enough, and then you can, you can understand the Rebbe. And then you're ready to go into Yechidus with the Rebbe. The Yechidus the, with the Rebbe, that's like a one-on-one -on -one meeting that the souls connect on the, on the level of Yechida. That's the highest, highest part of, the, of our soul. Um, that's the Yechidus by the Rebbe. When you go into the Yechidus, and the Rebbe, uh, if, if anybody was by the Rebbe, the Rebbe looks at you and you, get, you forget everything. It's like it looks inside of you. Uh, when I was with the Rebbe in, in 1982, 1981, 1981, I was with the Rebbe. And I don't remember much, but the, the Rebbe blessed me that, you know, Makar of Zayn people to Yiddish Kebe Simcha. That's part of the blessing. That's why I can play for you because the Rebbe blessed me that, you know, I can help other people feel Yiddish Kebe with Simcha. So uh, the Rebbe looks at you and he looks, he sees you all through. And even, you know, that's, that's a Rebbe, but even somebody simpler, uh, not a Rebbe, I was, I, I had the schut to learn with Rabbi Eliezer Nanes. Anybody heard of him? Subota, he wrote a book about Shabbos. He kept Shabbos in the, in the Soviet Union in, in Siberia. He was sentenced for 10 years in Siberia. And when the 10 years were finished, he got another 10 years and he didn't lose his faith. And he kept Shabbos all 20 years. He kept Shabbos. He wouldn't let them let him work on Shabbos. And there's many stories. So w when he got out of prison after 20 years, and he got out of Russia and he got to Eretz Israel, the Rebbe told him he should learn Torah with women, because he didn't learn for 20 years. So he wasn't at such a level of, of you know, so learning with Yeshiva Baruchim. So he, he told him to learn with women. So I had a schut to learn with him. I think for two years I, I, I learned with him. And the first time I came to him. He agreed to that if I come with my husband, he said you have to come with your husband, and he asked my husband if he's willing that I'll, that if he's, he agrees that he'll learn Torah with me, and my husband agrees, and he says, "What's your name?" So he asked me, "What's my name?" And when he says, "What is your name?" and I had to say, "Rachel Yochevet," I felt like he sees my whole soul from one end to the other. It's a special feeling. So I said, even not by a rabbi, even by a tzaddik like that, you know. So, so. <laughs> But Yechidus, you go to the Rebbe, and, and your soul is like all open, all open. And um, so um, the Yechidus by the Rebbe, that's the, that's the soul thing. And then you have to wash it out. So how do you wash? With Negan, with happy Negunim. You have to wash it, you have to soak again with, with Negan. So because of Hit Kalalut, Hit Kalalut is like uh, when, you, when we count Sfirat Omer, there's Chesed and Gvura and Gvura and Chesed, Chesed, all of them are connected, interconnected. So since uh, all of them are interconnected, so you can do all three stages with nigan. So how do we do it with nigan? So there's a nigan of preparing yourself for going to Yechidus. There's a nigan of Yechidus. There's a nigan coming out of Yechidus. All three stages. 
So uh, the, the main part is, is Yechidus, which is, which Negan will be for Yechidus? You can give a guess. What will be the Negan for Yechidus? The Negan, the Holy of Holies, which is Abba Bavot. But we're not going to sing it today. We sing it only on very special occasions and special dates. Well, we are going to sing a Negan, a preparation for, for uh, Yechidus by a pupil of the Alter Rebbe. They say that the pupils of the Alter Rebbe, the Hasidim, used to sing this Negan of Rabbi Shlomo of Cheshnik before going to Yechidus. And then Yechidus, for Yechidus, they used to sing, it was Yechidus itself. But if they couldn't get to the Rebbe, like in our time, people wrote to, to uh, even time of the Tzemach Tzedek, some uh, farmers complained to the Tzemach Tzedek, they can't travel all the way to Lubavitch to see the Rebbe. It's too far and it's too much time and don't have money. And, and, so I said, do you have a river in your village? Go dip in the village and then envision you to yourself the Rebbe and sing the Arba Bavas, you know, sing the Holy of Holies, and you'll be with the Rebbe. And that's what the Rebbe told to people in, in the Soviet Union where they couldn't get out, the Siruvniks. He says, what should we do? So he told them, sing a nigun, he meant this nigun, the Arba Bavat. So we're not going to do but we're going to do nigun of preparing to get into the Yechidus and coming out of Yechidus. Both by Yav Shlomo of Cheshnik, they said the Hasidim used to sing this one before, and the other one to sing after Yechidus, after seeing the Alter Rebbe. Okay. Uh, and preparation to getting into Yechidus by Rabbi Shlomo of Cheshnik, pupil of the Alter Rebbe. 
In Sefer Nigunim, it's uh, Nigun 216, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think so. So, then there's a Nigun of after coming out of Yechidus, which is a famous... Okay, so we're um, not exactly connected with Pesach, connected with cleaning ourselves up and getting ourselves more pure. And you know, when we, if you want to get to a certain mood, you take a nigun and you get to the mood. We connect with uh, with what the Rebbe had in mind when he wrote a nigun. If it's nigun from tzaddikim, and uh, we sing it in a clean way, in a pure way, we get what he had in mind. The same. Vice versa also, if somebody had bad intentions in his song and we sing it, we get it. We get what he had in mind inside there. You need a very big tzaddik in order to convert this song and, and, and bring it up to Kedusha. But if it's a holy nigan, it helps us elevate ourselves and purify ourselves. Um, they say, I think we've mentioned it once, a kol morel kavana, voice evokes intention. But I want to mention just one part of it. We still do the whole class about that. Um, <clears throat> sometimes the Tanya is talking about it. Sometimes our hearts are clogged up. Sometimes our brain is, is clogged up. It's called Timtum Alev, Timtum Amoach. We just read about some of it in Tanya recently. That, uh, you know, many times we can't, we can't daven. Our heart doesn't feel what we're saying. It can't, can't get excited but by Kedusha. And uh, that's in chapter 29 in Tanya. I happened to look at it the other day, so I remember it's chapter 29. Um, the Alter Rebbe says, you know, it's, it says in, in the Zohar, in, in Kabbalah, that a chunk of wood that the fire can't catch, you have to break it up into little pieces then, you know. So a body that, that, that the light of the neshama doesn't shine in it, you have to break it up. So how do you break it up? There's all kinds of ways, levatesh, bitush. And uh, one of the ways is nigun. Nigun is one of the only ways, if you have timtum amoch, this can be timtum alev, of the heart is clogged up, or the brain is clogged up. If the brain is clogged up, it won't help that you learn because you don't understand what you're learning. If your heart is clogged up, if you learn the right things, maybe it will get to your heart. But if your brain is clogged up, you need a nigun. So um, I don't have a nigun for that. Let's do Betzeti Simon Sain. Uh, Nigun by Rav Ginsburg, let's do this one. Let's say, Yeah. 
ניגן בייר אביצר גינזבורג, בצאת ישראל ממצרים. I want to do another Kaliner song uh, that also helps us get unstuck. Uh, many times when we prepare for Pesach, we get stuck just from the terror of what we have to do. Such a big job. How can we do that? Again, you have to break it up into little pieces. Then we can go, get over it. Uh, but um, one, of the, one of the tricks is to envision ourselves already in the end. After the whole process, we survived, we went through, we got there safely. to envision us in the end of the process, and then we can get there. You know, we have the faith that we're going to get there. We will get there. Somehow, we do get there every year, so this year also. Uh, not, two years ago, you were in Corona, I remember. Leah, right? How did you survive? Somehow, and you made it to Pesach. <laughs> we don't know how. Um, so, uh, and Purim, and Purim in the Megillah, There's one מי יודע. Do you remember where the מי יודע in the Megillah is? And for him? מי יודע. Mordechai asks Esther, מי יודע אם לעת כזאת הגעת למלכות? You know, what's מי יודע? מי is one of the highest levels of, of above knowledge. You know, we don't know. It's at such a high level of מי יודע. He tells Esther, you know, if you don't save the Jewish nation, Hashem will, because me or them, Hashem is so big, if you don't do, do, you don't do it, you'll find a different way. So that's the me or them in, in Purim, we have one. On Pesach, we have 13 me or them. We, we sing this poem of me or them, two, three, we get to 13 of them. And uh, even though by Chabad, we don't sing it in the, in the Seder, but most of the congregations do. And it can give us a taste of, of waiting till the end of the Seder already that we're there. There's a Nigan by Karlin, I promised you another Karliner song, also by Rabbi Aaron of Karlin himself. What was the other one? I forgot, there was one that they say that they sang it when they, when they went through the Kriyat Yam Suf. Which one was that? I mentioned it before, and I already forgot. Um, I don't remember which one. Too bad. I'll have to sing it in the group. <laughs> I saw it before and I read it and now I forgot it. Uh, I know, I know which one. I remembered. Okay. Yeah, what you want to remind me? What is mean, Yams? Yams? What is it? Which nigan? I remember it. It's the Hodul Hashem Kito. We'll do it after. But first let's do the Ezechad Biyodea by Rabbi Avaron of Karlin. And the beauty about this nigan that it's so, so long that you have enough time to clean a lot. <laughs> Because it's 13 steps, and when you get to each step, you go backwards, you know, we say two, you count one, and we say three, you got three, two, and one. We count five, five, four, three, two, one. 13 all the way down. We're going to do a few, and then we're going to do all 13. There's a lot of words. But remember that the beginning is the main part, and the part without the words is the main here in this world. It's connecting with godliness, knowing that it's all from him, and he take care, takes care of us. And he um, I didn't explain, but we did it last week, we explained. But let's do. What's buzzing here? I don't know.
Again, the whole 13 with Rav Yisrael singing it. He claims it's a good school-like for cleaning for Pesach, both because it's long and the other because you have in mind. Where are you going? In Chabad, when we get to the end of the Seder, the Rabbein used to sing Keli Atla Vodeka uh, for when they used to pour the wine back into the bottle. It's part of the Hallel that we say at the end of the Seder. Actually, on, on Leila Seder, we say, on the night of Pes first night of Pesach, we say Hallel twice. We say it at the davening, and we say it during the meal, after the meal. We start before the meal, half. We eat in the middle, can you imagine? The Hallel, you're not allowed to talk in the middle. So on Pesach, we start it before the meal, we eat the meal, and then we go on, which is unbelievable. You know, that's a Hallel. And um, some of the big songs in the Hallel, there's a lot of them in Chabad. That's for some other time. But I want to do I want to do two of them, one by Karlin and one by Breslov. Let's start with the Breslov one. The Breslov one has a very interesting story. Um, the story is about the Baal Shem Tov. They claim that this nigun is from the Baal Shem Tov, 
And when there was a famous story with a blood libel in, in Turkey and the Baal Shem Tov uh, in the middle of a Seder, he started singing this part of the song, over and over and over again. And at that the same moment when he was singing this, the decree was nullified. They killed the, the, the wicked the, uh, um, uh, vazir, the, the, um, the minister of the, of the sultan that was trying to kill the, all the Jews. And he was killed right when the, when the Baal Shem was singing this song. I'm not telling the story this time. It's too long. You can read it in the stories of, of uh, Rav Zevin, this book of stories about the blood libel with the Baal Shem Tov in Turkey. Look for it. It's called Halel Gadol. Halel Gadol is, is the chapter 116, if I'm not mistaken, that you say, Hodul Hashem Kitov, Kilo Lam Chazdo, Lo Senev, Kilo Lam Chazdo, that's Kilo Lam Chazdo 26 times. And uh, that's called Halel Gadol. So the Seder and Leila Seder, and here's the melody by Breslav attributed to the Baal Shem Tov. Balshemto used to sing at that time. He just sang over and over and again. That's when the the, the, the crew was nullified. <laughs> one, which is a Kalina. Here's another one by Rabbi Aaron himself. In Kalin, there's so many Pesach songs written by the Tzadikim, many by Rabbi Aaron of Kalin himself. Rabbi Aaron was very, very friendly with the Alter Rebbe. He might be the Alter Rebbe, one of the people that brought him into uh, uh, in, to the Rav Magid of Mezrich. And he became a chassid. So uh, this is a song that the Kaliners say they have a they have a, a masoret. They have a, a tradition that Rabbi Aaron heard it from the angels, and that with this song, Am Yisrael crossed the Red Sea. When we're crossing the sea, they used to sing this song. So let's. Oops, here it is. I had it on. This one. By some other Hasidut, they claim that it, be it, it belongs to the, um, uh, how do you call them? 
באוהב ישראל מאפטה, that today was his yard site, that it was his ניגון, they have something almost similar. write the notes for the other version, I don't know what the differences are, but there is a difference. Um, we didn't do some more songs from the end of the Seder. We can do some of the poems that we sing at the end of the Seder. There's one that is attributed to Baal Shem Tov, which is a mistake. There's a different Nigun that is his, but I don't know how it is. Karev Yom, there's one Karev Yom I don't know how it goes, maybe for next year, if I do my homework and I write it down so I can learn it, I can sing it to it. But there's the famous... Uh, it's going to be too high for you. from the Mashem themselves. There's another one, but I don't remember it, how it goes. Adiru. Also entering. Provides the ending because I don't remember how it goes, but it's also an ancient song. Um, there's some things in the in the end of the series. There's a lot of poems that they don't sing in Chabad, but they do sing them with many, many chavadot. Some things are not exactly a song, but just a nusach. A nusach is the way they're saying it, uh, like. Uh, כאשר זכית Thank you. 
Pesach, the way they say it. Uh, there's some songs for Chasal Sidut Pesach also. I think this is a, a Polish, a Polish a march or something that they took and put it. Gadiyad, I don't remember any specific melody. Chad Gadiyad. How does it go? I don't remember one of the And this song they don't have it in this one. No. I don't know that. It's, I think it's a combination of, of some songs. Okay. Uh, let's see the Carliner have here. Yeah, Pesach. Do you wish he, he should do that again too. That's a the, good the, the, one. Deep one? This for Pesach, a uh, dance for Pesach. They have they have a lot a lot of songs. So let's do a Beish uh, Amda again. The Chabad one or the Karlin or the 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 folk version. Which one you want? Both. Both. <laughs>
that it's more fun cleaning while listening. That's great. Keep cleaning. <laughs> clean ourselves and clean the outside. Um, yeah, when we get to the lowest point, that's a, that's a trick I, I heard from uh, the um, uh, Gad Venkat, one of the Rabbeim in, in Bat Ein, who's a, a big scholar. He says, um, also according to the Tanya, we're not supposed to go down on ourselves. We're not supposed to, to think that we're bad and, and look for, for all our mistakes. There's specific times to look for, for mistakes. And the rest of the time, we have to be happy. So uh, Rav Gat says, when is the time to look down? It's like when you do Bikat Hametz. When, when you feel low anyways, if you're really stumbling down, you feel like you, you're crawling, that's the time you should take the candle and look under the covers and, and, and look for the chametz, the chametz inside. You know, when we're really low, that will be a good time. Let's do the other behish and that we will learn is probably also from Rabbi Abu Kalina. <laughs> And uh, we'll finish it. should have a wonderful time getting ready for Pesach. It's one of the most fortunate times to clean ourselves and our souls and our bodies and our homes and, and get to a lot of simcha. should get to Pesach happy. That's the main Amen. piece.
We have to get out of Egypt, out of our Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rachel. It was beautiful. Okay.